Hello everyone and welcome back. Welcome to my another playlist on Apollo GraphQL where we are going to write a GraphQL server and at the client side we are using React and for database we are using SQLize as an ORM. So we have a different set of tools. We are going to combine them together and we are going to write GraphQL APIs for a blogger application where you will have a different entities we will talk about a lot of different things like first of all how you can integrate this GraphQL server with Node.js I mean how you can just uh, start a GraphQL server then we will write queries we will write mutations and we will be fetching data from MySQL database so in me, my previous set of videos we had the same kind of setup we had a GraphQL with Apollo and instead of SQLize we were using Mongoose with a MongoDB but in this new app which we are going to write a blogger application where user can do a blog post can add a tag can add a category all this kind of apis we are going to write with the help of sqlize as a orm because we are going to use mysql so broadly if we categorize this then we are going to use apollo graphql i mean this is a library which we are going to integrate with the node.js express then we have a SQLize as a ORM. We will be using SQLize CLI to create a migration and all these things. So let's get started broadly what all components we are going to talk about. So I will be starting with wherever we have left. So this is the baseline code from our previous playlist where we were just talking about MongoDB with the GraphQL and we wrote some APIs. Okay. Here we will talk about one new item which is SQLize. So in my different playlist, I have already covered how SQLize works, how type ORM works. These are kind of ORMs for our Node.js systems. Like in Node.js, if you wanted to use MySQL, MongoDB or any other database, then SQLize and type ORM, these two major type ORMs can be helpful while talking to your database, dealing with the migrations, seeding a new data or writing a queries. Okay, they have like different tool set which you can use. With TypeScript, I think you can use a type ORM. With normal JavaScript Node.js code, you are good with a SQLize has a good tool set and SQLize is more popular than any other ORM in current world, okay? So we will be using SQLize. SQLize is also doing the same thing. It is a ORM for our MySQL database. We will be writing a different MySQL entities, okay? And then we will be writing migrations for them. And we will be just defining the associations okay one to one one to many many to many in different entities like if we talk about the blogger application what we are going to have a user we will have a blogs user blogs then there will be a comment then there will be tags and there is a different kind of associations will be there between those entities okay first of all how to get started so i will just jump in here get started you just need to install sqlize and sqlize cli if you wanted to use SQLize from the command line for running the migrations and all and creating connection is simple you just pass the database configurations like host, port, username, password for the database uh, you just need to pass the dialect and if you are using uh, SQLite then you just need to pass the storage okay and we just need to add the sqlize.authenticate which will authenticate okay database credentials are correct or not and then you can start writing the entities so i will go to the entities directly because before setting after setting up the whole application we are going to write our entities like user entity blog entity tags entity so you can compare these kind of models with like mongoose model is is for no sql database similarly now we are talking about a user schema here schema is predefined these are the columns are going to be created in the mysql table first name last last name and later you can also define the associations between one entity to another entity so all those things we will talk about we will be doing these simple operations find update find all find find one create destroy okay this is also supported by a sync await we can use all the data types hooks querying and finally how we can do the migrations this is the important point so you have to use sqlize cli for it if you really want to understand how sqlize works 
then I have a separate playlist where I have covered everything about SQLize and Node.js, how to create migrations, how to create entities, relationship and all. Okay. So you just need to have a config.json file somewhere in your code and you can write these config SQLize CLI uh, migration generate, migration run, seeders, all these things. So migrations will actually run the migration against database and it will end up creating the entities or dropping the entities based on what you are writing like this. So here you are doing a bulk insert. So it's like a seed task. You are seeding something in the database. So you can seed generate and then run them. Okay. So this is a kind of migration skeleton you write. Here you will write a logic to transform the DB table or create a table or update a table. Here if something goes wrong then this is the revert mechanism. Okay. So apart from that we will be using GraphQL. So you know uh, already the GraphQL is kind of rest okay in terms of the HTTP communication okay this is also HTTP post you are just putting a query here like if I just talk about a simple query in the documentation if I all user then you will be writing just a query here and we will be just executing it against this endpoint so GraphQL is providing us a single endpoint GraphQL and you will be hitting this query or you will be writing queries and mutations and you will be getting the response. You might be doing a data aggregation at the server side that is another thing that is all advantage of GraphQL over the rest. Okay. Apart from that how we are going to write a GraphQL server we are going to use Apollo server library Apollo GraphQL server library which will help us to create a GraphQL server. So we already have it created from our previous playlist if you wanted to explore more how we are creating a GraphQL server. So uh, we are using the latest version of GraphQL server and we are building the schema resolvers and then we are starting the server. So Apollo platform is an Apollo is providing the implementation. You can say, okay, so Apollo providing the Apollo client and Apollo server, Apollo client you can use with the React, Angular, all these framework. Apollo server you can use with the Express to create your GraphQL APIs, okay. So we have already seen something on that like how we are creating a Apollo GraphQL server. We are creating the schemas then we are using this Apollo GraphQL server, Apollo server express and this is how we are creating the instance of Apollo server and then we are just starting the server. We are just passing this uh, STDV server to listen to the port and uh, we are using the express so in the latest version of Apollo server this is how it is being used. You can use this server to uh, initialize the subscription handlers okay. So what you need to do if, if you want if you wanted to try it from scratch you install express you install Apollo server express and for now you can keep these empty schema and resolvers create the instance of app, app express okay create the Apollo server instance. An Apollo server instance you have to pass you have to pass in our application so you can see this HTTP server so we are applying this Apollo server as a middleware on this express instance so you can you are able to see that uh, GraphQL playground because what we are doing is in this server server dot apply middleware so we are applying middleware on the express instance on this path okay so it is exposing this GraphQL APIs on the express instance and rest is simple express we are creating http server http server create server we are passing the express instance and then listen to that port okay this is the very basic which we have already written and looked at into it so from next video what we will do is we will start writing the schema and our resolvers so we will not write the implementation what data we are going to get for that we have to understand the entities we are going to use but at least we can write the schemas like okay user schema we have a post schema we have a tags all these schema what data our graphql apis are going to serve okay so let's get started thanks everyone